All right, hello everyone. Welcome back to the channel. This, of course, is another anime reaction video. Today, we're going to be starting a new series that has just come out just yesterday as of this recording, because I'm recording this on Friday the 18th, just yesterday, Friday or Thursday the 17th, Record of Ragnarok, the entire first season, because there, I don't know, may or may not be a second season. It got dropped all on Netflix, 12 episodes, and I'm really interested to see how this goes. I'm really excited to give this show a try, because it's gotten, the manga got talked way up. It got really hyped up. So I'm excited to see how this goes. And the premise seems interesting. So the premise is like a, like a 13 matches humans versus gods fighting for the survival of humanity. So that's a really interesting premise. I'm excited to see how this goes. Uh, I'll put like the little, you know, the little eye thing that goes up here. I'll put it up here if you really want to s s check out my reaction to the tr second trailer. I don't know why you would, because I'm watching the anime now, but if you're interested, that, that, I'll put it there, maybe. It'll probably be in the description if it's not there, but I might forget entirely, because I forget a lot of things <laughs> that I say I'm gonna do during these reaction videos, because I'm, I, I, whatever. We're gonna get started with episode, with hopefully multiple episodes. I don't know how many episodes I'm gonna do for this first recording, but I'm thinking till the end of the first match, maybe. Either way, as always, down in the description below, you will find a link or two to the episode full-length uncut reactions to, uh, yeah, the full-length uncut reactions. So go watch those and then come back to YouTube and you can watch the discussion. So let's get started with the reaction. All right, so holy shit, what a first episode. <laughs> that was really, really cool. I... Unfortunately, there weren't a lot of huge action set pieces. Obviously, this is just the first episode, but I'm so I am so on board for this season, for this series, because that was really really interesting. So basically, in this episode, it was just introduction to everything, but I I kind of I kind of appreciate how fast paced it's going because for such a simple premise, a uh, premise premise, uh, of a tournament arc or whatever, this whole season is just gonna be a big tournament between the thirteen strongest humans, thirteen strongest gods. It kind of has to be fast-paced. Like, they could have spent more time... They could have spent this entire episode just explaining, like, lore and showing off different characters. But I kind of appreciate the fact that they didn't waste their time at the start to do that. Instead, it's just, quick, let's get into the action. Let's draw you in with all these cool character designs and set the stage for a really interesting premise for the rest of this season. With a big tournament with gods, whatever. Let's get straight into it. By the halfway point, we're, we're about to start the first match. We're still not done yet, we're, but we're, we haven't started the fight yet, but we're going into the first fight, which is going to be really, really cool. From what I can tell right now, it's going to be a really cool fight. <laughs> it's going to be a really interesting fight. Strongest Chinese warrior and the, the quote-unquote strong one of the strongest gods, which, by the way, let me look up Lu Bu real quick. He's a Chinese Chinese warrior, Chinese general. Courtesy name, Feng Xian, Chinese military general warlord who lived during the late Eastern Han Dynasty of Imperial China. Which, by the way, before I forget, if anyone's watching and they feel like taking their time to do this, which I'm not saying you should because you don't have to if you don't want to, but the way, uh, the way they were doing it made it difficult to actually see some of the names of these characters because they didn't actually have like separate subtitles for it because of the way Netflix I don't know exactly how they do their subtitles but they kind of, the way I understand it is they have like people monitoring like how good it is at translating but for the most part it's automated and I guess that makes sense because it's like a huge company but I imagine they prioritize getting the subs out as quick as possible and having them not be baked into it so they can't like they can't do it like fan subs do it you know what I mean so and I'm probably going to keep watching it on Netflix, though. So if anyone feels so inclined, if you could, in the comments, just, like, give me some of the names that I missed because of uh, the fact that uh, the way Netflix does their subtitles. But anyway, real quick, I'm pretty sure I looked it up during the trailer reaction, but I need to look up the voice actress for um, Brunhild. I like her voice. Uh, it was really good. So her voice actor is Miyuki Sawashiro. She sounds familiar for some from something. Slan and Berserk. Oh, Luca and Berserk. Luca's a great character. I love her. Uh, Deadman. Uh. 
Was she... Was she... I know I recognize her from something. A Kurapika, that might be it. But I think it might be something else. Was she... Was she, um, Jolene in the, uh... The Eyes of Heaven game? I yeah he, I was right. Uh, Miyuki Sawashiro voices Jolene Kujo in the uh, All Star Battle and Eyes of Heaven JoJo's Bizarre Adventure fighting games. That's where I recognize her from. Unfortunately, Miyuki Sawashiro is not going to be Jolene in the anime, but instead it's going to be another girl woman. One, I forget what her name is, but she does a pretty good job too. Based on her yada yada dawa, she's going to be pretty good for uh, playing Jolene. But that that's 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 where I recognize um, Brunhilde's voice from. It's Miyuki Sawashiro who voices Jolene. The uh, the the voice actress for the anime for JoJo Part Six is going to be Ai Faroz, which I'm excited to see how she does because she she um, voiced um, Hibiki Sakura from uh, How Heavy Are the Dumbbells You Lift. But I'm 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 uh, getting really distracted. Not very much uh, really like impressive animation. For the first episode, honestly, I'm fine with that. <laughs> Even if, as long as they have the still, if all, as long as they use the stills effectively in fights, because I imagine a lot of the fights are going to be stills because of how like detailed the art style is right now, I'm fine with that. Because I I liked the animation in Berserk 1997. I liked the stills because they were used really well, and the stills, even though they were completely still, they were really nicely illustrated. So as long as they do that, and have like really good voice acting and music. I don't care. Psst. I'm gonna I'm gonna let the animation the uh, quote unquote bad animation slide. And even some of the three D didn't look bad. I think the only time. Give me a minute. Okay, I completely forgot what I was, uh, <laughs> what I was talking about just now. But I will say I hope I hope to God that um like Viz or something. Hopefully you know what I hope mm, Viz or Kodansha. I hope a Viz or Kodansha uh, will uh, consider doing an English release of the manga. Because as you can tell, I'm a pretty big manga fan. I own a lot of manga. Back when I first started collecting manga, like in 2019, I was like, I'm gonna only buy manga for series that don't have an anime. I had a bad anime, had a good anime, but didn't get a season two, but that's just, that's just changed to just manga, whatever the fuck I want. <laughs> just manga that I want. So I hope they do, because generally I prefer manga, but I hope they bring the manga over. I If, if, Viz, does, if Viz does it, I hope it gets a uh, gets the Viz signature release, kind of like um, what can I, what, what's a good what's a good example? You know, ooh. But if I got the hardcover like JoJo release, that would be cool too. But I at most I think a Viz signature like Dora Hedoro or like Black Lagoon. And if Kodansha were to pick it up, I'd want them to do, you know, uh, what's it? I'd either want them to do, like, the hardcover two volumes in one, like, Vinland Saga <laughs> type thing, or just, like, the regular stuff, like, with a, like, with Sweetness and Lightning over there and Witch Head Atelier. I wouldn't want them to do, like, the, uh, the standard viz size release of, uh, Record of Ragnarok, because if, if the art style in the anime is this detailed, then the manga can only be more detailed. <laughs> so, I, I'd love to see that. It'll totally get released. I would wish that they would do it sooner, but they probably won't because it's not as popular right now. But it, it's a hundred. Record of Ragnarok is a hundred percent, a hundred percent going to get more popular now that it's got like a fucking Netflix anime. Especially because Netflix is something that even non-anime fans use. So they, there's a higher chance that people who don't normally watch anime are going to see this and potentially at least give it a try. And if they end up like, there's profit to be made. So I hope to God there's going to be. A record of Ragnarok English release of the manga. If there, if that hasn't already been released or uh, announced, let me check a second. Record of Ragnarok manga English release. Da, 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 da. It says June 17, 2021. Viz Media announced 2021 that they would license the series for English release. Oh, I guess. I was wrong. They apparently did? Maybe? Viz Media... Ragnarok. No so I, know, I know sure as hell that it's not like actually physically released yet. Because I haven't seen it yet. Because I would have already pre-ordered it if it, if it is uh, released or on pre-order. 
Is it just their digital release right now? I hope to God it's not just the digital release. Record of Ragnarok manga is coming to digital fall 2020. God, fuck you, biz. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I love, uh, I always buy their shit. But like, bro, digital, only digital by fall 21. That's so, that's not that far from now. That's like, what, August? Is that August? No, August is just still some. Either way, tw I gotta wait till spring 2022 just to get the print. Fuck, god damn it. That's so long from now, dude. <sighs> This is, this is not, I hate it here. <laughs> anyway, I think that's pretty much all I had to say about this episode of Record of Ragnarok. I'm very excited to get to this next episode. Uh, you probably already know, you watching this right now probably already know how many episodes I'm doing in this one video. But I plan on going till the end of the first match with Lu Bu and Thor. Because I think that would be a good stopping point. So, that'll be ahead. I'm going to go ahead and watch episode 2. Uh, if you've watched the reaction, the uncut reaction, you probably watched both, or however many episodes that I have in the uncut before coming to the discussion, but whatever. That was not quite what I was expecting for, or necessarily hoping for, in this episode too. I was hoping to be getting more of the fight, but most of this episode was just lots of flashbacks. <laughs> like, people make fun of Naruto for having lots of flashbacks. Maybe it'll get lesser over time. Maybe it's just this one episode, and then we'll get, like... An episode or two more of uh, fighting between Lubu and Thor, and that's kind of how the the cycle will be. Like, like fights last four episodes. If if fights last four episodes, they spend some time flashbacks, uh, explaining the characters, and then lots of fight. Then that means if there's twelve episodes, that would be about three fights, which is crazy to think about. Three fights in twelve episodes. Damn. That was a really long fight. <laughs> I don't know how it's going to go, but I'm really... Even though this isn't the episode I was hoping for, there wasn't as much fighting as I was hoping for. There was a lot of interesting uh, exposition through those flashbacks. Uh, like, I really enjoyed... Because I don't know how accurate they are to, like, real life, but I really enjoyed... Like, I don't think... Maybe, um... The story they told of Lu Bu during his execution day. That might just be an artistic interpretation. There might not be huge amounts of knowledge regarding Lu Bu's execution. And that's just kind of what the Emperor at the time wanted the story to be. You know what I mean? But I think that was a really <laughs> fun little moment. A bit of characterization. And I really, I kind of really enjoy like the dichotomy between Thor and Lu Bu. They're very similar and they mentioned it themselves they're kind of like two sides of the same coin and if they had met each other under di different circumstances they would have actually been close friends so that's really cool that's a really cool like concept and i wonder that makes me wonder what kind of like relationship so to speak will the gods and humans have in the future because th their relationship is that they're both supposedly the strongest of their uh their kind strongest human strongest god they were very fucking, they were very, very bored with their, you know, with their standing, with the fact that uh, they're the strongest, no one could match them, and then they, one of them died because of that boredom. They didn't have anything that pushed them forward, they were just kind of drifting around in the world, not really sure what to do, and now they're meeting together. I wonder what kind of thing, will they keep up this, like, sort of theme of uh, the gods and humans not being so different kind of thing. Because they, they kind of brought it up in episode one, too, where Brunhild... Wait, no, was she? Was she accusing them of being, like, as scummy as the humans? Because that's kind of something I think I brought up while watching it, that they... To throw in their face, like, you're being scummy like the humans, just giving them... A, without, it was zero chance to defend themselves and wiping them out. You know, like, you're being cowards and whatever. I don't remember if she actually directly said that, but that kind of is similar to... Like, like they're they're not so different. The difference is their like power and their authority and that sort of thing. And that's kind of, that's a really interesting you know dynamic to have, is that they're not so different. The only difference is like the power, like the the raw power, that sort of thing. So I wonder, I wonder how how much of that's going to be explored in the future. <laughs> and other than that, again. Animation isn't the most important thing, but it felt like some of the time I was just watching a PowerPoint presentation. But, and it's not even... In some of these, like, the backstory... I, I do really like how they changed up the art style. 
kind of for the backstory for Thor. Only thing I have to say is that some of the the, uh, the characters, because the backgrounds looked really nice. I liked how they looked. It reminded me, it, it reminded me of like an old medieval fairy tale, like sort of book. But then the characters, they just don't feel like they fit. They didn't go all the way to make sure like the characters have the changed art style as well to help them fit into the background. I think that's the only real complaint I have. It was still an interesting story, but I felt like I felt like it could have been sh cut down a bit too. Like it felt pretty long. Like that was a pretty lengthy chunk of time for that. And then same thing with Lubu. Lubu was pretty long story, even though realistically you could have told that story much much more concisely. But I guess maybe I don't. You know what? I don't know the in and outs of um, how they're doing this show, but. Even bes despite those criticisms that I have for this episode, despite me not feeling as hype or excited or anything by this episode, it does get me excited for the next episode. It, this episode did a good job exciting, getting me excited for the next episode because now I know that they, now that I know about more about these characters, they kind of like front loaded the exposition on who these characters are, how they got to be there, who the, who the what kind of people they are. And they sort of started giving us ideas of how exactly humans are able to combat gods on equal footing. Now that all that's coming into play, it coming being explained, now that I know, next episode will definitely be more of, if not the, conclu the eventual conclusion by the end of the episode, of the fight between Thor and Lubu. Now that we've gotten all that exposition out of the way, it's going to be probably purely that. And that, that's got me, that's got me excited. That's got me really excited. So, I'm going to get into the next episode. So, I'll start, you'll see the discussion on YouTube in a little bit. <laughs> Fuck, man. I did not want that to be a cliffhanger, goddammit. But instead, they, they just, they just had to go with a cliffhanger. They just had to leave me on the edge of my seat and then fucking get the fuck out of here. God damn it. <laughs> And you know what? This episode isn't even fully what I was hoping for because it wasn't even all fight. There was still a lot of um, exposition, you know? A lot of things uh, being explained that... So it wasn't straight up fight. But there was still so much cool things happening, like the awakening of the hammer, the truth behind the gloves that Thor wears. This was still insanely good. It wasn't exactly what I was hoping for with the full-on fight, but it was still amazing. And they... They, they did get me there at the end. That was amazing. That ending bit with Thor's hammer throwing it. And I'm genuine, genuinely... I think the horse getting mad or whatever is either to symbolize that Lubu has died. He has lost this fight. Either that or that was just there to make us think Lubu's dead. They're going to start the episode with thinking Lubu's dead. But in reality, he's still alive. Fight's not over yet. Oh, fuck. I mean, I think I think for a first fight uh, against apparently the the literal strongest god and the strongest human going against each other, I think it'd probably be best narrative wise to have the god win, because there's it's supposed there's the gods are supposed to be this intimidating force that no humans could ever possibly match up to. That's why humans have to pray to them, they have to pray to them, offer sacrifices, do whatever it is they tell them the gods tell them to do because humans can't deal with gods, and so I think maybe that might help is to have Lubu be the, to, to lose. Earth's mightiest hero, or mightiest, the whatever, the mightiest human in history, to lose would adequately add a sense of despair to this whole thing. No matter how hard we tried, even with the strongest human, with a weapon that can challenge the might of the gods, to only end up losing in the end, would make everything feel like it's pointless. But even so, we're not ending this soon. We have to keep fighting, and eventually, we like the second fight maybe is when they really hit us with like, "Fuck yeah, we humans just because you're you're gods, we can still we can still take you down." Type thing. Maybe that's it. Maybe it's not. Maybe maybe Lubu will win. Honestly, either way, it would be good for the story because it it would either show us that even if we have weapons that put us on almost or if not exactly equal footing with the gods we're not uh, in the end we're still humans we're not 
as strong as they are, so it's still going to be an uphill battle. We can't, like, rest on our laurels because the, the weapons, you know, make us more strong than, uh, make us stronger than we actually are. But on the other hand, if Lubu does win, that's a really huge victory for humans. It's a basically, like, it's like shoving their fucking, the, he, the god's face into a cake or whatever. It's really, it's like spitting on them, like, yeah, you think you're cool just because you're gods? Well, if we were on equal footing, we'd kick the shit out of you, type thing. Because that's that's literally what this is. So that's, that's really that's really cool. And I'm, I'm really, really, really excited for the next episode. They're really... You know what I mean? <laughs> if that makes sense at all. <sighs> breathe. <laughs> just breathe. I'm getting into the next episode. Episode 4. <sighs> if the fight doesn't end here, then it's with another cliffhanger like, oh, watch next episode to see how this fight's gonna conclude. I'm genuinely gonna be, <laughs> genuinely gonna be upset. <sighs> Alright, so I'm definitely, I definitely didn't forget to look this up during the discussion bit. Because I definitely didn't forget to do that, and I'm not moving this bit while I'm in, I didn't remember this while I was in the middle of watching episode 4, and moving it to the end of the discussion of episode three but but uh, anyway uh record of ragnarok human fighters all right let's go into the human fighters real quick so i, I can because i don't remember all of them um, i don't want all the humans just the human fighters you bitch fighters here we go uh humanity fighters there we go We've got Adam, Buddha, Jack the Ripper. That's not all of them. That's only six of them. Come on. You're, you're breaking my heart here. Okay, humanity. King Shi Huang, King Leonidas, Nikola Tesla, Grigori Rasputin. Rasputin, really? Soji Okita, Mikhail Nostradamus. Nostradamus, Simahaya, Sakata, Kintoki. Oh, these are the remaining fighters. This isn't even all of them. Oh, fuck. Don't look at that. I don't want to see the results. All right. I don't have the full list. If someone in the comments wants to leave me the full list, but I have an idea of who all the fighters are. And so I'm definitely going to start episode 4 now because I wasn't I didn't look that up in the middle of recording episode 4. I swear. Don't tell don't say otherwise, please. <laughs> but holy fuck. What a conclusion. What an Oh my god. That was such an amazing fight. All right. I don't care that the animation wasn't as uh, top tier as it could have been. I don't care that if it's, I don't care if it's not as good as Jujutsu Kaisen or fucking what you call. What's the other show that had a lot of good animation that everyone combed in their pants over? Fucking something Slayer, Demon Slayer, not Goblin Slayer. I don't care if those had better animation. I fucking this uh, this was amazing. This fight was better than. Well, probably not better than most fights I've seen, but this was one. This was an amazing fight. And if you're gonna you're gonna tell me in the comments the fights only get better. Fuck you. <laughs> this fight was amazing. I cannot see this getting better, but it probably will. And I'm so, I'm so here for it. That was such a, a crazy conclusion to the fight. And I, I, I really loved how they left you no, like, n there was no way you could have predicted who was going to win. I'm sure you had ideas who was going to win. You probably guessed or you probably betted. But I don't think throughout this entire fight I ever thought to myself, one side will definitely for sure win it was back and forth and it was never it was never clear who was gonna win that was that's amazing like i think it's fine like mo most shonen things there's like a thing you expect to happen like the protagonist is gonna win usually you won't win the, the protagonist won't win but the fact that this technically doesn't really have a central protagonist or antagonist it's just two groups of people that you can pick your side but they're two groups of people. The other, I don't. I feel like in this situation they wouldn't want to favor one side over the other. So I, I don't think it's very. It's very hard to like paint a p clear picture of who's gonna win like fights. Like I think, like in IQ, I love IQ, but outside of season one, where it it makes the most sense to have Karasuno lose against uh, Alba Josai, pretty much everything after that. I always expect them to win. Like, it's a nice surprise if they don't, but they probably will. Now that they're going to Nationals where I'm at in the show right now, they're they're going to win a bunch of games. Even if they don't win Nationals, they might not win Nationals. But they're they're going to kick some ass because <laughs> they're, they're the main characters, even if they give screen time to the opposing teams. But with this, since there's no, like, central, like, 
protagonist. I guess you could count humanity, but I, I don't even even then I don't think that's like true. And besides, I don't even think you can predict how this series is gonna end. If they if the author does choose that like the series is over after the fights are over and it's concluded whether or not humanity is going to survive, I think it's fair to like say that humanity will probably continue to survive for another thousand years. But I think if the author wanted to be you know different or whatever, he could have it end with the humans losing. But either way, that's if he chooses to end it there. He could go further with it. I don't think he should. He or she. I don't think they should continue after this whole tournament thing because that's the biggest draw of it. Uh, I don't know where you would go after that, but then again, if it's not if the manga's not over yet, I don't know how they're gonna end it either. These are all the huge questions that don't really matter to me because I'm not a manga reader. But I just think it's really it's this whole this whole thing has been like a, an incredible experience. Like I'm so so glad that I decided to check this out. And you know what? I'm, I'm it's really good. It's it, this has been really good so far. I'm really excited to get on the next episode. This fight. It was amazing. Let me talk about a little bit more about the fight, because I, I need to say more than just saying over and over again that this fight was amazing. But uh, other than the fact that you never, I never once like knew definitively who was going to lose. It was just like a continual back and forth of like amazing things. I I'm kind of I'm kind of glad that they went with humanity loses the first fight because it was like I was saying in the last discussion. It instills a sense of despair that. Earth's strongest hero couldn't win. He was close, but he still couldn't win. So, what chance do other not as strong humans have? That that it, it puts that question into your mind. And also, the way he lost is fucking brutal. We don't know what happened to the Valkyrie. Whether or not she's dead. Lubu's fucking dead. His arms came off, and he had his head taken off. God damn. And I, even though I don't particularly like Lubu in the way he was characterized. Not, not that I don't like it, but I don't like him as a person. I wouldn't be friends with him in real life if he was real. Well, if this version of him was real <laughs> and he was still alive. But I, I really enjoyed that little bit of extra like depth and characterization they gave to him before he went away. Even though it's kind of like a cheap thing to, like, before a character dies, just shove all a bunch of uh, information about that character onto you. I thought the way they did it and, like, the specific... Because they didn't make it, like, some, like, cheesy, sappy thing where, like, I fight because uh, something, something, protect the people I care about. He, he's, he just wants to fight to get stronger. And I really, I really kind of really enjoyed that, like, short story that they had of him with the, uh, the tree that got struck by lightning. Also, partly because of the irony that, that he would go up against Thor, of all people, when he was a kid because he saw lightning take down a tree just like that in a single blow and just like there's this cool strong super guy in the sky that i want to fight and there he had it that was amazing and then uh, it's it's some it's surprisingly wholesome you know like despite everything we know about him being like like a monster on the battlefield killing people ruthlessly not giving a shit that he's going to be executed just because He's bored of life because no one can beat him in a fight. That that moment with the horse, especially too, when his horse showed up, when he was uh, when we learned more about it, surprisingly wholesome, <laughs> surprisingly heartwarming, which is really cool to see. Uh, you know, I if you're if you're gonna tell me in the comments that this is somehow gonna get better as the series goes on, well, fuck me, I'm in for a goddamn ride. I'm really excited to see how uh, it goes in the future. If you're if you're if you watch this point, let me know how you feel about this adaptation so far in the comments. If you're a manga reader, because obviously the animation's probably not up to what you call it, up to par among the general anime communities, like the consensus of the anime community. Because but because because apparently among the majority of anime watchers, animation's literally the only thing that matters as long as it has epic animation. <laughs> It's 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 a ten out of ten masterpiece or whatever. Maybe I don't have enough experience to make those claims or whatever. But I I even despite not hugely amazing animation, I still really enjoyed this. I imagine that it's gonna at least for a few weeks, the show is gonna have low ratings because people are gonna like have knee jerk reaction like oh the animation's bad, uh whatever whatever. But it'll slowly rise to like a more fitting 
rank. I don't think it'll be as high as the manga. I don't know what the rating is for the manga, but it's probably not going to be as high as that. But it's it's gonna it's gonna be higher. It's gonna be. I think it so far absolutely it deserves above a seven out of ten. Bare minimum, it deserves a seven, at least in my opinion, so far. But uh, as long as they don't, and you have to let me know in the comments without actually spoiling it. Do they? Did they actually change things in the manga? Like, how much did they change things up in the manga? Did they take some things out, extend some things, add some things, uh, rush past some things? Uh, that would be an interesting to hear thing to hear. But uh, without me said, I think that's pretty much everything I said I wanted to say about these episodes. Really excited to get into more Record of Ragnarok. If you uh, watched the video to the end, thank you very much. Make sure to press the like button if you enjoyed. And hit the subscribe button, turn notifications on as well. So you don't miss out a single upload of Ragnarok, Record, Ragnarok, Record of Ragnarok in the future. Or anything else I upload in the, potentially upload in the future. Once again, thank you very much for watching. Peace.